Mr. Goldsworthy was born in Cheshire, United Kingdom in 1959, but he now lives in Scotland where he still to this day creates art. Um, he does have work on display there. Um, he also has work on display all over the world. Now, since his work is location specific, what he does after he's built his beautiful sculptures then he goes and he does the um, takes the photographs of them and does professional photography as well so he's well versed in different types of art media and so we are going to get to learn how to create works of art that are inspired by inspired by Andy Goldsworthy the first thing you're gonna do is get you a basket or a container of some sort um, and go around your yard and begin to gather materials. Sticks, leaves, branches, flowers, pebbles, rocks, um, berries that you might see on bushes. All of these things are things that you can gather together. Get them all together. And once you have everything together, then you can actually get started on putting together your design. As you're selecting materials, I want you to consider a variety of leaves and objects and the different size things that you can find. Because when we have variety in our works of art, it makes our viewers want to stay and look at it longer. It makes them engage, okay? And we want to create that engagement with our work of art. We want them to stay and look at it. So as you've gotten the different materials, consider variety. How do we put it together? I want you to start by finding your centerpiece. And mine, your example, you'll get to see, I chose a thistle. By the by, thistles are very, very prickly and they hurt. So you have to be very careful. So I chose that because it was big, it's kind of predominant or dominant. And I put it in the center of my area that I started to work. Now, it was important to consider um, where I would get a good shot because if I'm using a lot of greenery, what if the background was grass? You wouldn't, it wouldn't stand out. So I chose to use it on our walkway. And our newer walkway was about three foot wide, so it kind of helped me gauge how wide I needed it to be. I expect y'all to have a little bit more pattern. 
and a little more definite, okay? And I am excited to see what you create. And again, I'm going to have examples for you. Okay, now, middle and high school. Y'all's is going to be about three feet wide. I know that sounds like daunting, but it's not going to be that hard because once you put like branches in and some long grasses and stuff, it actually quickly becomes wider. Okay. I know I did this yesterday just to practice. Okay. Um, and it wasn't hard at all to make it start getting that far out in diameter. Okay. So you are also going to have repeated pattern. Remember guys, we've been learning that in the principles of design, we have variety, and we have repetition, and we have pattern. These are all things that are used together to make a strong work of art. And that's what you're gonna be worrying about as you create your Jeff, nope, uh, Andy Goldsworthy um, works of art. So now we've gone through the video. You've seen my different um, points that I'm different age groups are supposed to look out for. I do want you to first and foremost, ask your mom and dad or your adult um, before you start picking stuff in the yard to make sure you're not messing up anything they've got growing. Um, I was considered and asked my mother because I am not the gardener. She is, I kill things. So I asked first. She's a huge supporter of the art. She ran inside and got me some clippers so I could pull berries off of the holly bush. Also remember to watch out for certain things. I'm gonna put pictures in the video to watch out for poison oak and poison ivy. We don't want any rashes and don't eat anything you see in the yard. Even if it looks delightful and yummy, um, don't eat them because you don't know if they're safe or not, okay? We are just creating art. I hope you have a great time and I can't wait to see what you create and upload to our classroom and I love you very much. Bye!